Hello everyone and welcome to another CQP web tutorial. In this tutorial uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the different things that you can do on the screen that you see in front of you which is the standard query screen and I'm going to be demonstrating this with the British English 2006 corpus which is a 1 million word corpus of British English from the year 2006, you'll be unsurprised to hear, uh, and this is on the Lancaster CQP web server of which the address is here, it's cqpweb.lanx.ac.uk. And as ever, the version which is given here, uh, the version that we're looking at of CQP web is version 3.0.15. So this standard query screen is the screen uh, that the user sees as soon as they log on to CQP Web and enter a particular corpus. And if you look at this left hand side menu, where you have various options that I'm not going to go through in this particular tutorial, we'll return to some of these in later videos, uh, the standard query option is the very first option right at the top of the menu. Um, if you go off to one of these other options, for example frequency lists, shan't go into it now, but let's say you go there and you want to get back to the standard query, then it's just that option on the menu there. Uh, what else do we see on this page? Well, we have the menu for all the different sorts of queries and information. Uh, we have our standard query control area here, and then you also have system messages, which if you've got a server, such as the Lancaster server, that is being used by many people, then the administrator of that server may post messages. If so, they'll appear here. Um, so if there is a new message then something important may have happened but uh, there isn't a message uh, more recent than about two months ago here so we can ignore that and we can move on to look at just the standard query interface here. Um, there are two sets of things to know about this query uh, interface. First of all you've got the query box and there's various things you can do in here not all of which I'm going to talk about in this video, there will be later videos. And then you've got a few things that you can tweak around here to control how the query works. So let's first demonstrate a very, very simple query. One word, let's say the word however. Um, you type it in, you press this button here, start query. It hums away for a second or two, and poof, we have our query. 617 matches in 277 different texts and if we scroll down then we can see various examples. Okay uh, and to get back to the standard query you can either just press the back button or you can select the new query option here and press go. So that's it. Fundamentally that's how you do a basic query. Let's talk about some of these options. Firstly, let's talk about this query mode option. There are three modes of query, and the default one is simple query ignore case. What does simple query ignore case mean? Well, it means that you type in the word that you want, as we just did, that's why it's called a simple query, but the word will be treated as case insensitive, that is, um, whatever you type, doesn't matter whether you use capital letters or small letters or a mixture, it will always find all the different forms. So uh, on, I typed in however like this uh, previously, but I also got examples of however with a capital H at the start, and I even got examples of however in all capital letters. Now. If I do a search for however in all capital letters with ignore case on, I will get exactly the same as I saw before. I will get however in lowercase, such as this one, I will get it with an initial capital, and I will get it in all capitals. New query. Go. If I want to turn off this behavior, let's say I want to search for however at the start of a sentence, then I need to turn on case sensitivity. 
if it's case sensitive then only words where the case is exactly what you see here will come so the answer so the result of this query if I run it start query you can see that all of these are capital H and then the rest of the word small letters uh, this is perhaps even more obvious if I go all capitals and you should see come on you should see that there's only one or two examples oh just one example that is in all capital letters the third mode is CQP syntax and CQP syntax is a much advanced uh, mode which allows you access to the full power of the underlying corpus query processor this is really only for advanced users I'll come back to it in a later tutorial we have two other controls that are of interest number of hits per page and restriction number of hits per page does exactly what you think it would do the concordances that we get when we run a query are paginated so you only see a certain number at a time and by default that's 50 but if you want to see more you can turn this up so let's say I pick a really frequent word pick the there should be lots of examples of the actually since it's a one million word corpus the is usually about six percent of words so I would expect around 60,000 words uh, 60,000 examples of the so let's see if we can find 60 th oh, start weary 60,000 examples of the oh, 58 close enough and we've got uh, 250 per page and if I scroll down yes you can see the numbers here going up and up and indeed yes bottom of the page we've got 250 per page obviously still got lots more pages new query go another thing that you can do though here is you can use the very top option here which is count hits and this can be used if you don't really care to get the concordance you just want to know how many there are of a particular word so if I do that with the query the I just get the information that is normally at the top of the concordance which tells me how many were found okay if I go back so we've now seen how this works we've seen how this works let me put that back to 50 how does this work Restriction means search only part of the corpus. And in fact, you've got an entire option here on the menu, Restricted Query, which allows you to search a restricted section of the corpus in a very advanced way. However, for convenience, you've also got access to the most important method for restricting a query from this drop-down. And as it happens, this is different from corpus to corpus, but in the British English 2006 corpus, um, you can select one of these um, broad genres, which have been deemed, when we set up the corpus, we decided that the division into these four broad genres was the main way to... Um, uh, to identify uh, different sections of the corpus. There are other ways that you can access with a restricted query, but these are the main ones. So, for instance, if I go to Learned Academic, the three, the four broad genres here are fiction, general non-fiction, learned, academic, scientific text, and then news, editorials, reviews from the press. So if we go to scientific writing or academic writing and we ask for examples of however, and I press start query, then you can see that all of the examples that were in quote marks the last time we saw it, they've now gone because it was all reported speech in fiction and we've got far fewer matches than we got previously and this is because we are searching uh, just part of the corpus we're searching just over 180,000 words new query now something that else that pops up at the bottom of the restriction box is last restrictions so 
If you just want to search in the same subsection that you searched in last time, you can pick last restrictions, which in our case is academic. But if you've used a restricted query, then last restrictions might be something quite complex that you've composed. And basically that's a shortcut to save you having to uh, enter your restrictions over and over again. Uh, so we could search for however in academic text that way. I'm not going to do that though, I'm going to show you the use of the reset query button. Uh, let's say you've changed all kinds of things here and you don't want to have these settings, you want to go back to what it is normally. Uh, then pressing the reset query puts this entire control back to how it was when you first loaded it. So that can be quite handy. Um, Okay, there's just two other things that are worth mentioning for the standard query interface, and that's two links to where you can find help. The first is this link here, Corpus Documentation. The Corpus Documentation link will take you to um, a website somewhere that has been specified by the people who set up this corpus, uh, as a way, uh, as a place on the web where you can find information about it and find out what's in it. So if I click on that link, you can see that in this case it actually downloads a PDF file, so I shall keep that. Uh, and if I open it up, oops, here it is. Uh, this is a PDF of um, a presentation that Paul Baker, who created this corpus, made about it uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, so if I close that now, get rid of it, don't want it anymore. The other thing to note is this link here which tells you about the simple query language. Um, again, not going to go into it now, just to note that if you click on it, uh, it will either open as a PDF or download as a PDF depending on uh, how exactly your browser is set up. Uh, and I open it up and you get some instructions on how to use the simple query language, which again not going into now, but um, uh, some of the more advanced stuff that I will introduce in future tutorials, uh, you'll find it useful to have uh, a look at the details in there. And that's all. That's it for this tutorial video. Thank you very much for, uh, um, for your attention. Uh, goodbye.